Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and I teach a comparative anatomy lab. This video is going to go over the cat digestive system. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So digestion always begins at the mouth via two processes, mechanical and chemical. The mechanical digestion involves mastication or the act of chewing and chemical digestion involves salivary amylase, which is an enzyme that digests carbohydrates. The food leaves the mouth as a bolus into the esophagus. All right, so now the bolus has passed through the esophagus via peristalsis and enters the stomach through the esophageal sphincter. In the stomach is gastric juice with bicarbonate ions and proteases, and a protease is an enzyme involved in protein digestion, and so protein digestion begins in the stomach. Carbohydrate digestion does not occur in the stomach because the acidity of the stomach actually denatures the amylase enzyme. The bolus then leaves the stomach as chyme. So now we've entered the small intestine whose main function is absorption. The chyme is gonna pass into the small intestine via the pylorus, which is that muscle that expands and contracts to allow the passage of food into the small intestine. The small intestine is divided into three parts, first of which is the duodenum, and the duodenum is going to receive the chyme from the stomach. Also, it's going to receive bile from the common bile duct, and bile breaks down fat. It's also going to be receiving pancreatic juices from the pancreatic duct, and that pancreatic juice is going to break down proteins and carbohydrates. Now, in the duodenum is primarily the absorption of iron. The second portion of the small intestine is the jejunum, and this is where a majority of nutrient absorption is gonna take place. The jejunum is that the folded portion of the small intestine that is very long, and if you remember, the reason why the small intestine is so long is to increase the amount of time for absorption to take place. So in that jejunum is where nutrient absorption is gonna take place over a period of time. The final part uh, and third part of the small intestine is the ileum. This is where salts are gonna be absorbed as well as vitamin D. Now I realize it's not being shown on this picture, but you will see it in the next picture. All right, so now we're entering the colon, which is also known as the large intestine. This is where water absorption takes place in the formation of feces. And so feces is also stored in the colon. Now the first portion of the colon is the cecum. This is on the ascending side of the large intestine. This is where probiotics are housed. So you'll notice the cecum, it kind of looks like a finger. And you'll notice also in front of it, there's that ileum from the small intestine, that very last portion of the small intestine. So if you find one, you find the other. Now the very last portion of the colon is the rectum, and this is on the descending side. The rectum is prior to the anus, so this is where feces is going to be stored. Okay, so now we've covered the general digestive system. We're going to move into the accessory organs, beginning with the liver. Functions of the liver include detoxification of blood by rendering toxins water-soluble, because if you remember, toxins are lipid-soluble, so they cannot be dissolved in water, and you want them to be so they can be expelled from the body. It also functions in bile production, and once again, bile is an emulsifier. It performs emulsification, and that's just the breakdown of fats to increase surface area for enzymatic activity. And then it's also involved in energy storage. Um, glycogen is stored in the hepatocytes, or the liver cells, and glucagon, which you may be familiar with, it's a hormone that breaks down glycogen in those hepatocytes into glucose. Now the gallbladder is always gonna be on the surface of the liver. And that is because it's storing the bile that the liver has been producing. And bile is just a green substance. So sometimes the gallbladder looks green. But the best way to always identify the gallbladder is to look for a blister on the surface of the liver. And it releases this bile into the common bile duct into the duodenum of the small intestine. Now the pancreas, is always on or near the duodenum of the small intestine for a very particular reason. Its exocrine function is to release digestive enzymes through the pancreatic duct into the duodenum of the small intestine, so it's always going to be at, on, or near the duodenum. 
It also has an endocrine function by regulating blood sugar, and this is by secreting insulin and that hormone glucagon. And if you recall from the last two slides, glucagon is that hormone that gets the glycogen to convert to glucose in those hepatocytes. So gly glucagon, excuse me, actually involves increasing blood sugar. Insulin decreases blood sugar. The spleen looks like a finger laying across the stomach. This is where blood cells are produced, stored, and broken down. And of course, because of that, the spleen helps filter blood. So that is the, the digestive system of the cat and just across mammals in general. I hope this really helps you. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you want to test your digestive knowledge, there is a quiz video, and then there are also videos for the mud puppy and the shark. Thanks for watching.